Enemy is before us. I am with the Grand Allies. You're mine. Bring on. Threats be to me. Yeah, you're all 
You got a visual on us, Ant? Great. Transfer us up in about three minutes from now. This is... I understand how determined you all are. But from our side, we really want to maintain good relations between His Majesty and Dr. Marcus. I understand. I will go and request their approval. Yeah. And when you're ready, all you need to do is press that button. Gather everyone who wants to go out into space, uh, choose some place discreet. Understood. I'll be waiting. Got it. Uh, yeah, feels like I'm finally home. Yo, glad to see you're still in one piece. So, you finally gonna fill me in on what trouble you've got yourself in? And you wouldn't believe me if I did. I assume you four are the crew of that Federation ship. Why aren't uh, Miss Leticia and Mr. Albert here with you? Nah, don't tell me I'm not gonna be able to properly thank the people who saved my little bro. This is Marielle, Sayuri, Pike, and Cassa. Everyone, this is my brother, Antonio Lawrence. Hello. I'm Lieutenant Mariel L. Kenny, first officer of the Pangalactic Federation vessel Astoria. Astoria? Wait, isn't that the ship that shot? Uh, 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 hold it, hold it, Ant. I'll explain all that later. For the time being, I could sure use some grub and a fresh pot of gel. Follow me, everybody. Uh, this is a pretty hard story to swallow all at once. <laughs> I'm honestly amazed all of you are still alive. All thanks to my friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, coffee, how I've missed you. I still can't believe the Federation would sink this low. And now you're saying there are renegade ships just slinking around. This isn't some kind of smokescreen to attack Vergald, is it? No, of course not. But... Poking Marielle won't give up any useful answers. There's just too much we don't know. So let's just wait for my new friends, and then we can all go find out together. All go find out together, he says. <laughs> yeah, and about that... So you want to let aboard Marielle and her feds and even these locals from Aster 4 to go chasing after this Baldor and that Scorpium thing. Are you saying you can't do it, Antonio? This is to pay back our debt of gratitude as a Lawrence. I have no problem with that. However, Ray, I'm giving you command of the ship. This is a bit out of my league here. Should be a cinch for you, right? Since it operates the same as the Edis. Sounds good. And my hands will be full, so you explain things to Dad. <laughs> You're an ass. All right. I guess we're waiting until we hear from Leticia and the others. I'll get some rooms ready for you and your crew. Take it easy while you can. Better rest up after all that. I do wonder how Marielle and the rest are faring. But it does feel good to be back on a familiar ship for a change. Maybe I ought to head to the living quarters and catch some much needed sleep. The meals on this ship sure are fancy. We've been eating nothing but field rations forever. I can't tell you how good this is. I really envy how Cassin can just chow down, even at a time like this. <laughs> oh, the coffee here tastes just like what we have in the Federation. Oh, where are these beans from? Ah, 
come here for a swig every chance I get. Yes. We're lucky that Antonio is so flexible. I wouldn't have been surprised if he tossed us all out of an airlock. Welcome back. Take all the time you need to browse. Florence Logistics stocks only the finest goods. Wow, that's pretty rare, isn't it? Show me more of your collection. Don't make me beg. <laughs> this thing's got the same layout as the Edis, so I might as well just take my usual room. It's down the hall on the other side of this one. No idea Virgoldian ships were so cozy. I'm a bit I guess nothing beats that at home feel, huh? Oh, you're a fan of a SOA too? I'm just taking a break. How about a game? About time for a rest. Ray, there is an incoming transmission. Please report to the bridge. Leticia and everyone must be ready now. Better head to the bridge and answer their call. Leticia, you ready to roll on your end? Ray, well, we have assembled everyone. All right, I'll initiate the transfer. Get somewhere you won't be seen. Hey, Antonio, I want you to meet my friends. Let's go welcome the princess and the others in the transfer chamber. Welcome to my humble abode, your highness. 
Ray, this is your ship? <laughs> Not so different from the Tyrannus, huh? But it is so different. There are so many lights. Ah, well, this ship is up and running, I guess. Antonio, I give you Princess Leticia. I am Leticia Austerius. Thank you, once again. A pleasure, Princess. I'm Antonio. Raymond, you've been traveling with such a stunning beauty this whole time? Oh, well... <laughs> All right, everyone. Let's make for the bridge. We'll be taking off soon. See that? There's your planet, Leticia. Aster 4. That is... our planet? Our world? To think all of our struggles have taken place in such a minuscule space makes one feel insignificant. Yes, but it is so very beautiful. No doubt about it. Right then. I suppose we'd best get going. Elena, Chloe, Miss Kenny. Roger. It's been so long. I'll, uh, do my best. We're counting on you, Aldous. Chloe, get us out of orbit. Keep thrusters at one-fourth power. Exiting orbital trajectory. Thrusters at one-fourth power. We have exited orbit. Now entering conventional space. All systems, green. Right then. I guess our first priority is to chase that ship carrying Boldor and the others. I hope you're not intending to engage them. The Aldus won't stand a chance. Oh, yes, Ray. Here. This is from Lola. It is a record of the battle between the Scorpion battleship and the Akizuki from the Tyrannus. She hopes it will prove useful. Much appreciated. Okay, let's get this analyzed quick. I have no intention of taking them head on. All right. If we compile this data first, we might at least be able to figure out where the hell that battleship is headed. Under normal circumstances, it would likely be their homeworld. It may be safe to assume they are returning there. No such location that would correspond with the concept of a homeworld exists within Scorpium. Is that so? Scorpium is a collective of life that forms a network which spans the galaxy, with enormous spaceships traveling between artificial colonies and space stations. Well, couldn't those be considered their home planet? No. In this particular instance, all the bases and ships are also part of the overall Scorpium life form. That is correct. Hmm. So. You got any idea which one of these massive life forms they might be headed to then? The man known as Gaston contained many factors that differ from the current state of the Scorpion. Thus, the accuracy of any predictions we make will be low. Hey, hey, okay. Are you really telling me we don't have any leads right out of the gate? I mean, can't we use our long range sensors to pick up their trail? Yeah, they're already way out of range of our sensors. Ah, for crying out loud. Uh, what's that? Okay, take it easy. It's the sensors picking something up. It might even be them. Chloe? No, it's a Federation ship. They're approximately 36 hours away. A Federation ship. They may be coming to apprehend Sayuri and I. All right, it doesn't look like they're heading for Aster. Hmm. <laughs> Want to test our luck and try to make contact? Hmm. Unlike the Astoria, they are making no effort to conceal themselves. At this distance, the Aldus should be able to outrun them as well. Not so sure about this. Chances are they picked up our signal already. It'd be more risky to just sit around and do nothing. Ant, patch the signal through open comms. Roger that. Opening a line of communication. Connection established. Putting them on screen. 
This is Captain Raymond Lawrence, aboard the Vergoldian transport vessel Aldous. State your name and affiliation. This is the Pan-Galactic Federation battlecruiser, Bella Gulf. And I am its captain, Curtis Aldrich. I never expected to meet a member of the Lawrence family in the middle of nowhere like this. It's an honor. Permit me to skip the formalities, Captain Curtis. What brings you out to this middle of nowhere? We're en route to our destination and in a hurry. Though I'm not about to share any more than that with the captain of an anti-federation Vergoldian ship. Understandable. So I suppose it's just a coincidence that you happen to be heading in the same direction as the Scorpium ship that we happen to be tracking? You... how do you know of the Scorpium? We just recently engaged a Scorpium vessel, which had entered the Aster system. We've since determined that the ship was crewed by soldiers from the Federated planet of Veer. Captain Raymond, I think it may be best we exchange information. I should like to make contact with your ship. I must decline. You see, I was on board another ship, the Yetus when it was taken out by an unlawful attack from a Federation battlecruiser not too long ago. Are you referring to the Astoria? I hear it was illicitly cloaked and attacked without warning. <laughs> oh, well, if you know about that, then I assume the Astoria must already be hung out to dry. Actually, they're currently on the run. What? <gasps> The Federation's most advanced ship has gone rogue? Our ship, on the other hand, is in no such state. Transmit our logs to Vergold if you like. We have nothing to hide. We make for the site of an emergency mission. Though, at present, we could use all the information on the Scorpium that we can get. Fine. Send us a rendezvous point. We'll give you an estimated time of arrival once we figure it out on our end. Much appreciated. Wishing you a safe voyage. Over and out. Coordinates for the rendezvous point received. Our ETA is 10 hours, 57 minutes. Ray? Uh, no. Captain. I think that we can trust him. I agree. We may gain some valuable information this way. Uh, you should be more worried about getting arrested. We have no reason to trust them, or think that they have our best interests at heart. Arrested? Oh, yes. I suppose you're right. Either way, we still have 11 hours until we know for sure. All right, everyone. Let's take breaks and shifts. Um, and, uh, what of us? Right. <clears throat> Allow me this opportunity to give you all a tour of the ship. Raymond may be the captain now, but the Aldous is still my ship after all. Uh, understood. You have my thanks, Sir Antonio. I wonder what Antonio has everyone up to. Bridge here. Looks like all the folks from Aster are a bit excited and confused about being on a spaceship for the first time. Faces around here. I better set a good example. Hey, you want to go somewhere for checking in? Somewhere fun. Hang your bag. Come in. Hang your Hey, did my brother behave on your tour? Antonio is much more of a gentleman than you. Aw, thank you. So, what do you think of the Aldis? How should I put it? It's incredible! Oh, every last bit of it's nothing short of incredible! Every aspect of life here is like another world. No, no, another dimension. It's all so astounding. I don't know where to begin. Let me say this. Preventing him from wandering off whenever I look elsewhere is proving quite a difficult task. 
I know full well that this journey will be difficult, but it is quite thrilling to think I will experience what was spoken of in Larkis for myself. Glad to hear it. You're welcome to wander and check everything out at your leisure. Any questions, feel free to ask Antonio or myself. On that note, Chloe? Yes, Captain. If you hear a voice come out of that, do what it asks, okay? Yes, understood. We've prepared rooms for each of you in the living quarters. Rest up as much as you can until we rendezvous with the Vela Gulf. Your family must be one of the great houses of this Sea of Stars. Still, it beggars belief that you of all people could come from such a distinguished lineage. I have investigated Captain Curtis Aldridge. The record of his career suggests that he is quite the seasoned veteran. You need to make sure you show Leticia and the others the ropes of how things work out here in space, right? What should we do with this cargo address to Veer? We've lost contact with Veer Prime, so we'll probably have to dispose of it as undeliverable. Lola's from the same planet. Could I give it to her to take? so tough not being able to go home. So, please... Where did it go? Oh, man. Looks like I lost it again. All the it's fancy so trappings of her life sweet. seem to have thrown Leticia and her friends for a loop. I'm sure they'll get the swing of things soon enough. I guess Theo was a no-show? Albert and I did ask him to come along, but he refused, citing the lack of laborers and post-war affairs, the need for negotiation with the Empire, and assisting Lola with the Tyrannus. He asked that I worry not of home, and to instead focus on my journey to the stars. Huh, understandable. Tough position. But I'm sure working for the betterment of the kingdom will help him feel better. Right? I think so, too. We need to find out what Boldor is up to. Not just for Osirius and Vale, but for Theo as well. Agreed. I wonder what Marielle's up to. She was up on the bridge last I saw her. full of items new to the eye. <laughs> Be still, my beating heart. Midas was poking around a moment ago. He didn't break anything, did he? Simply say the word and I shall clap some restraints on him. Taking the crash course, I see? Uh, there's so much to learn. I'd like to at least get a little more familiar with the Aldus before we meet up with the Vela Gulf, so that I may be of some use if the situation turns bad. Don't push yourself too hard. You must be plenty tired as it is. I can't allow myself to be tired. I don't want this to be a repeat of the Edis. I have a duty to protect the Aldus as a soldier of the Federation. I feel you, but... Getting proper rest also falls under your responsibilities as an Aldous crew member. So take it easy. Captain's orders. Got it? I'll do my best. There's still so much Marielle and I both don't seem to know about this entire situation. Might be a good idea to see what Duma can tell me. Leticia and everyone should be in the common area. 
This is the bridge. I would like to know why you came aboard the Edis, Duma. We were dispatched to assess the integration suitability of Virgoldians. What the... So the shippers we were dealing with were Scorpium? Affirmative. But the client sure seemed like a human, from what I could tell at least. The Scorpium Collective takes many forms. Some may appear entirely cybernetic others as cyborgs or androids. There are also those who are entirely organic in nature. Ah, great. It is freaking horrifying to know that we handled unknown cargo from unknown clients. So you're saying that if I succeeded in delivering you, all of Virgold would be Scorpium by now? Horrifying is an unfairly emotional evaluation. Integration with Scorpium is- I don't care what you think. All right? Based on what we've seen and heard about it, that's how I feel. Deal with it. We cannot refute this statement. If Scorpium is truly acting in violation of our principles, it would be in defiance of our very existence itself. Are you confused? Do you even get confused? We cannot deny this possibility. There is a need for us to learn the truth of these events in order to carry out our mission successfully. We shall cooperate as much as possible when necessary. Oh, I'll see to it that you shall. Don't worry about that. After all, you're different from the other Duma, aren't you? Five minutes to rendezvous point. Ray, the Vela Gulf is hailing us. Put them on screen. Right on schedule, I see. I'll be on board shortly for that information exchange we mentioned. You serious? A sign of good faith from us. After we rendezvous, we'll warp out for one minute. After the transfer, we'll immediately warp back in. Maintain your course. I've just sent the data. Data received. Huh. Looks to me like there's only one person in the transfer chamber. Not exactly thrilled about their terms, but seems we've got no choice. Understood. Maintaining course and confirming that of the Vela Gulf. Transfer will commence within one minute of exiting warp. Once Captain Curtis is aboard, we shall adopt a parallel course to the Vela Gulf. Captain's coming aboard. Uh, guess it's up to me to bid him welcome. Marielle, Leticia, come on with me. I'm not too savvy when it comes to Federation etiquette. Understood. Uh, I should go too? Yeah, all you gotta do is stand there. If there's three of us, it should deter Curtis from trying any funny stuff. Very well. Gotta admit, Captain. I wasn't expecting you to come alone. It'll be easier for us to talk like this. Let's make this quick. The Vela Gulf is currently en route to the Manuk system. Captain, this emergency you mentioned. Are you Lieutenant Marielle Elkenny? There's a warrant out for your arrest, you know. I am aware of that and ready. We can explain all that and more in this intel exchange. First things first, though. Can I offer you a cup of freshly brewed Terran coffee? Don't mind if I do. Goodness. To think such a thing took place in the Aster system. So, what is it that has you rushing off to the Manuk system? Manuk is currently under siege by a large fleet of Scorpium ships. Headquarters interprets it as a full-scale invasion. Ridiculous. That is impossible. 
I've been wondering about this. A Duma, I presume. You know about Duma? We've been gathering information on our end as well. The Duma are the ones proselytizing the Scorpion's integration ideology, correct? Affirmative. Scorpion is a being that seeks to evolve as a life form. Aggressive incursions are nothing more than an act that limits our evolutionary choices. It would seem the Scorpion are no monolithic entity. The faction currently attacking the Manuk system are known as the Centralists. Centralists? Ray, do you think...? Yep, Centralists. That's the name Boldor mentioned on the Tyrannus. The entirety of Scorpion is composed of individuals linked without partiality. A central being cannot exist within our system. And yet Manuk is under siege by Scorpion calling themselves Centralists. How did Headquarters come by this intel? You know, Captain, it hasn't been that long since I left the Astoria, yet there seems to be too much new information. Hmm. Yeah, there must be some connection between the Scorpion and the Federation higher-ups. Fleet Headquarters, specifically. Your assumption is correct. A significant number of fleet officers have broken off from the chain of command. Most of them were in contact at some point with the Scorpion on the planet of Veer. Headquarters decided to launch a rescue effort in the Manuk system. It's unclear who's friend and who's foe within HQ, however. We may even be following a Scorpion directive. And even if that is the case, you can't just abandon them, huh? Captain Curtis, the Aldous is in possession of Scorpion data compiled by a soldier who escaped from Veer. We are currently pursuing the Scorpion ship that came to Aster 4. I'd like you to analyze that data and identify the ship in question once we reach the Manuk system. This is invaluable intel. We're in your debt. Yeah, no worries. Just reimburse me for the Yidus once this is all over and we'll be square. I'll see what I can do. Thank you for your time. I'll get back in contact as soon as we've identified the ship that you're after. We've exited warp. Commencing transfer. Please be careful. You as well. Vela Gulf has sent us a location. ETA to the Manuk system is 25 hours. Exactly six hours behind the Vela Gulf. Don't sweat about what he said. The larger an organization, the easier it is to corrupt. Captain, please don't make light of it. Even a single ship deviating from the chain of command is cause for alarm. If all of these ships are under the influence of Scorpium, then the risk to the entire galaxy is very real. I too find something strange about all this. What do you mean? Little Duma's reaction. I also felt that what Captain Curtis told us did not line up correctly with what we heard from Lola. She stated that the Scorpium invading her home were acting in such a way as to avoid detection. I did not get the impression that it was attacked outright in the same way as this Manuk location is being attacked now. I think Lola's hunch may be right about Scorpium having infiltrated the Federation undetected. But isn't Duma also a part of Scorpium? It must be hiding something. Little Duma always remains silent when they wish to be deceptive. When they do speak, it is generally free of falsehood. This is why their assertion that Scorpium does not invade must be true. Right, Duma? Correct. 
Doom is the only link we have to understanding the Scorpium. We analyzed the data from the Tyrannus, but we still have almost no idea of who or what the Scorpium are. We won't learn much of anything until we confront them ourselves. As I discussed with Captain Curtis, it's most likely that the Scorpium faction attacking Manuk are in cahoots with the ship Boldorizon. The Vela Gulf has kindly agreed to help us track it down. I have detected other unidentified ships also approaching the Manuk system, where the Scorpium battleship is heading. However, support from the Federation is still far away. The Vela Gulf, Aldis, and Manuk fleet will have to handle this alone. So what you are implying is that it will be a difficult battle. That is correct. What will you do if Boldor is aboard that ship, and we find ourselves forced into combat with it? All I can say is that we should be ready for anything, even if it means taking them out. It would seem war is much the same here in the stars as it is in our world. Yep, you got that right. Which is exactly why I want you all to rest up before we reach the combat zone. I better get some rest too. The ship sure got lively all of a sudden. If the situation weren't so grim, I'd almost say it was fun. So into battle amidst the ocean of stars, yes? Will the magnitude of it all shatter my fragile mortal psyche? I cannot wait. I don't think people usually say this coffee of yours. It's most bitter. Fascinating. Um, you sure that's really coffee? It's so tough not being able to go home. In there, did you? So please. Well, I have to say, the Aldus' specs are beyond anything I've seen on a civilian vessel. It still cannot stand up to face a proper battleship on equal footing. Midas doesn't need to make such a grimace when he drinks coffee. If he thinks it's too bitter, he should just get some cream and sugar. The information Captain Curtis provided is invaluable. There is still too much we do not know of the Scorpion. This ship has merchants, dining halls, and is so very spacious. Why, it is like a city in and of itself.